All right, this is Janine and I'm here with your Diamond Mentor Moment for this week. Today we are talking about mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? We're talking about the power of reflection. This is inspired by a quote that I heard from John Locke and he said, creative thought, you know, true powerful creative thinking is the result of sensation and reflection. So you guys know that I have done a lot of work in observation and using your senses, right? Your, your emotional senses, your physical sense, senses, spiritual senses, and that's just a big part of it. But today we're talking about the reflection part. Do we reflect? What does that actually mean? I'm going to give you some just some background information. When you close your eyes and you imagine things, like let's say you're closing your eyes and you're imagining a red ball bouncing down, a, down some stairs, or you're imagining a plane flying in the sky. You are taking position of your observer self. You're observing this action going on. You are not the ball itself. You're observing the ball. And so I also likened it to when I looked at my wedding video for the first time. If any of you guys have had a big event, your wedding, graduation, or birthday party, where you went through the whole day or the whole event, and then you watched the video and you're like, wait, that person was there? That happened? He did that? And because you just were not aware of all these things going on during the actual event. You weren't in the observer position. You were in the, the first person position. And plus, there's so much going on and time was, was going by fast. You miss a lot of things. And so when you watch the wedding video or the birthday video over again, now you're part of the observer position and you are able to see things that you missed before. Reflecting is the same way. You're in the observer position. You're able to kind of just look at the area, look at the situation and look at the experience with more clarity. You're able to see different things. You're able to perspective shift and, and move yourself throughout the scene that your brain has, you know, like crystallized. And so that is one of the advantages or a few of the advantages of taking time to stop and reflect. There's a great TEDx out there, which I really should share the link. I forgot who the speaker was, but she had a great point when she talked about the company Pixar. Pixar is a highly innovative company, and we really looked to them to see their culture of how they created a creative culture. And she pointed out that she looked at the experimentation type of culture or the pilot type of culture. By pilot, she means um, a, a term in Hollywood, I live in Los Angeles, so I'm very familiar with pilot season, where a lot of actors, you know, they they um, they try out for, for these parts, they write the script, it's a new show, and they do the pilot to kind of see if a network will pick them up. And if the network doesn't pick them up, they scrap the pilot. And, you know, there's no really like, well, let's do it again next season, or at least to my to my knowledge, they don't really do that too often. It's just scrapped as opposed to an experimenter type of culture where you do it and if it doesn't work, you learn from it, you iterate, you get feedback, you do it again. And it's this type of, of um, just doing it again and getting better at it. Part of that process is the reflective process. In this, um, in this text link write-up, I have a link to Harvard Business Reviews where they say in business, in corporate America, we don't give our time, we don't give enough time for people to stop and reflect. And that's where the learning happens. Frederick Douglass said, a battle lost or won is easily described, understood, and appreciated. But the moral growth of a great nation requires reflection as well as observation to appreciate it. And I'm gonna to add to learn from it and grow from, from it. And so we know the importance of reflection. I personally do a lot of reflecting in my journal. This is the one given to me from the great uh, Vanguard Fellowship that I was a part of for Be Me Community. And this is a great journal. And if you see my, my journal, like I have like pictures and stuff and I'm a very vi visual person. So I just, you know, I'm in a, a flower. My son gave me one, one random day, a picture of uh, J um, Chase, um, who was on the, the cabinet of for Link Lincoln, because I talk about him and then just, you know, like there's an eagle in, in there and stuff. So yes, I'm showing you my, my personal, personal thoughts, but this is my, my masterpiece basically. 
And I reflect in here, not daily, but I try to reflect in here a lot so I can get my ideas out of my head and onto the paper. I can get my experiences that I just went through out of my head and onto the paper and look at it from a different point of view. Don't forget, you saw the work that um, I shared from Dr. Michael Platt of how important perspective shifting and perspective taking is for your creative and intercultural development. And so this is one step that you can take, take as far as shifting perspectives. You can shift perspectives away from your first person self into your, um, into your observer self. And you can observe the situations that you've gone through. And so that is your diamond mentor moment for today. I hope that you take this rest of this 2021 and work on reflecting, work on journaling or writing down your thoughts. The top thought leaders and CEOs of our time and before have done that so you can too. Imagine if we did not have the thoughts and the journals and the philosophies of some of the great people who have who have um, contributed to this nation. We didn't have the thoughts of Lincoln, one of my personal favorites, or you know the thoughts of people who were positioned at times throughout history. Imagine if they didn't write anything down. So my question I want to leave you is who is recording your life? Who's recording your life? One day, hopefully, this book will be in the hands of my great, great, great grandchildren. They will know what I was thinking when the pandemic hit. They will know what I was thinking when I walked out on that TEDx stage for the first time, even though I had a huge journey and struggle with speaking well. They will know what their great, 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 great grandmother was thinking and doing and contributing because I took the time to reflect. I'll see you next time on Wednesday around 2-ish, 2.30-ish, and go be the best interculturally creative you and reflect. Bye-bye.